you guys, we have to talk about this case. I am just so mind blown by all of the facts of this case. And when I saw it pop up on, I've seen it on YouTube, I saw it on Twitter, I've seen it everywhere. And I don't get a lot of this type of content on my Twitter because I literally follow 21 people. So when it popped up and I looked at it, I was like, what? I honestly could not believe the details. I'm sure you guys have heard of this case. We're gonna talk about Eric Richens and his wife, Corey Richens, who has been arrested for his murder. So we're gonna get into all the details, talk about what we know, and I definitely wanna hear your opinion on this in the comment section. So get down there and let me know what you think. Just my usual disclaimer, this is all information that I have found online and compiled into a video for educational purposes. Thank you so very much for stopping by my channel today, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so Eric and Corey Richens were this couple that had been together for a while. They had three children. I believe they were married for nine years and their kids are all young, three boys under the age of 10. Eric was said to be this incredible father. He was very involved in his son's lives. He was a basketball coach, a baseball coach, a soccer coach. He was very hands-on and really, really loved being an active father in their lives. People said that Eric was really sweet. He apparently had this infectious laugh that everyone loved. And he was just kind of calm and friendly, reserved. You know, the guy that's always kind of chill, laid back, can get along with everyone. And his friends sing his praises, at least the interview that I saw, it was one or two interviews that I saw, where people just had only positive things to say about him. And something that he loved to do was hunt. He was an avid hunter and also a very successful businessman. So he had a lot going for him at this point in his life. He was in his late thirties, but the only part of his life that wasn't quite where maybe he thought it would be at this point was his marriage. To go back to the beginning to how they met, Corey and Eric actually met at Home Depot. She was working there as a cashier and he was, basically a constant customer because of the kind of work that he did. So he would come and go through the checkout line, kind of look at her and think about talking to her. And then he finally got the courage to talk to her. They went out on a date and the rest was history. And to people from the outside looking in, everybody thought that they had a really great relationship. And perhaps in the beginning it was. People said that it seemed like they had everything they wanted. Their life was panning out in ways that most of us hope that we can get one day, right? And apparently they seem to be really happy in the beginning. As far as what we know about Corey, I mean, there's been a lot of opinions about her online, but the one person that kind of seemed unbiased was this woman that she used to work with at Home Depot, allegedly. She did this interview that I came across on YouTube. It was like a screen recorded interview that someone did over FaceTime. So the legitimacy is, I guess, questionable, but it was an older woman, she seemed genuine, and she was saying that she knew Corey, and that Corey was kind of a, a nice girl. She was smart, she wanted big things for her life, and she ended up moving on from Home Depot and throughout her career eventually becoming a realtor. But as far as other things about Corey, we can only speculate based on the facts of this case, but we don't actually know. I personally don't actually know a lot about her. I put more effort into looking into Eric himself because he is the victim here. So in early 2022, Eric in his late 30s, Corey was in her early 30s at this time. He had suspicions that she was out for his money before everything kind of escalated. But he had spoken to his family and his friends about just his feelings about their marriage, just something didn't feel right. He kind of just got the vibe that she was out for money and that she maybe would do anything to get it. That's not his words, but as we talk about this more, you will understand why I say that. He had family members come and speak out about the fact that he told them that if anything happened to him, Corey was the one who did it. He said that he was pretty sure she was out for his money and the only reason he was really staying in the marriage at this point even though it was going downhill is he was worried about his sons he wanted to make sure his sons were taken care of emotionally 
financially. He wanted to be there to give them that stability. So that's why he remained in the marriage. And there's a few events that took place that put in perspective for us why he felt that she was so money hungry and let's talk about them now. So a while before he passed away in 2022, in March of 2022, before this, the couple went on a trip to Greece. It seemed like a vacation. I don't really know the details of why they went there. But while they were in Greece, they sat down for a meal and he said that after he ate this meal that you know Corey had given to him he got really sick he apparently had a really strong reaction to whatever was in his food and he called his sister back home and said i think Corey is trying to poison me he at this point wanted people to know what was going on and he emphasized to his family if anything happens to me Corey did it so Eric's suspicions about Corey kind of looking to get money from him. The suspicion was confirmed when two months before he passed away, he got a notification from his life insurance company saying that there had been a change made to his policy. He had this life insurance policy with his business partner and both of them were notified that there was a change. So when they followed up to see what the change was, knowing that neither of them had made it, Corey had signed in somehow and changed herself to be the sole beneficiary of this life insurance policy. And his estate was worth $3.6 million. And when he saw this change, he immediately signed in and changed it actually over to his sister. So he changed his life insurance policy he changed his will to make sure that everything that he had went to his sister. He even changed his power of attorney. I don't know if the will and the power of attorney are one and the same, but I'm pretty sure you have to go in and make changes to all that stuff. And he did. He basically took Corey out of receiving, he basically pushed her out of receiving anything if something were to happen to him and shifted, shifted it all over to his sister with the intent being that his children be taken care of if something ever were to happen to him. After he made these changes, he did not tell Corey that he switched it back, but he had in the back of his mind that she did this without his knowledge. And since we know that he had been thinking about filing for divorce and that they had a prenup in place, if he ever left her, she wasn't really gonna get anything. All this in mind, leading up to him passing away in March, is just, it's just so unfortunately predictable what actually ended up happening because of all the signs beforehand. So Valentine's Day of 2022, the couple sit down to eat. Corey makes Eric a sandwich. And when he bites the sandwich, he breaks out in hives. He has this crazy reaction to whatever is in the food. And he uses his son's EpiPen and he takes some Benadryl and that knocks him out. He's like passed out sleeping for the rest of the night, but he ends up being okay. And when he woke up from that whole ordeal, he talked to his friend and told his friend that he was sure that she was trying to poison him. This is multiple people now getting the same story from him that Corey is a threat, that she might be actually trying to do something to get him out of here. So a couple weeks after Valentine's Day, Corey was in the process of closing on this home that she was looking to purchase so she could flip it. And Eric wasn't too keen of the idea. He actually told his family that he planned to not sign for the house and he had to talk to Corey about it. But she was excited because I guess they had gotten approved. Not being a homeowner myself, I don't understand fully how the process works, but basically she was excited. She was in a celebratory mood and she ended up making them drinks and she served Eric with a Moscow Mule. A Moscow Mule is a drink that's made out of ginger beer, lime juice, and vodka. So he is in the bedroom, she gives him this drink and he drinks it. And next thing you know, Corey is on the phone to police in the middle of the night saying that Eric was at the foot of their bed, unresponsive and cold to the touch. So first responders come, they're on the scene, they are trying to see what's going on and it's evident that Eric had already passed away at this point. And what Corey tells police is that she gave him the drink, they were celebrating, everything was fine, he was in the bedroom and she ended up leaving her phone in the master bedroom and going to one of their son's rooms 
because this particular son was having night terrors. So she wanted to be there for the child and she ended up staying in that room, according to her, until about 3 a.m., which is when she went back to the bedroom to find Eric at the foot of the bed, deceased. She also told police that she attempted to do CPR to resuscitate him and that she had no idea basically what had happened, what had gone wrong. And the spotlight was on her from the beginning because of everything that we know Eric had already told his family. And there was an investigation launched to see what actually happened to him. A toxicology report revealed that he had five times the lethal dose of fentanyl in his system. He died from an overdose. This wasn't medical grade fentanyl. This is fentanyl that you buy on the street. And in addition to this, when medical personnel arrived on the scene when she first called and she told them that she tried to do CPR, they said that based on the condition of his body, it appeared that she actually never tried to do CPR at all. So it's alleged that she may have lied about that. In addition to the toxicology, and analyzing of his remains. Police also confiscated Corey's phone. It actually revealed that she wasn't 100% honest about her phone and where it was that night. It wasn't plugged up in the master bedroom the whole time, like she said, until she came back at 3 a.m. Her phone actually was being used that entire time until she went in the bedroom and found him at 3 a.m. She was walking around the house with the phone. Someone was. Allegedly, someone was walking around the house with the phone based on how the phone is tracked. It was locked and unlocked multiple times. There were various text messages sent and also received and later deleted. So she was very active on her phone. It was not plugged in in the master bedroom. If you don't have anything to hide, why would you lie about this? It would appear that she gave him something with poison in it maybe and then left and came back to see if it had worked. Spotlight had been on her from the beginning, but at this point, police knew that they had to keep their eyes on Corey. And we all know that the partner is always the first to be questioned and ruled out. So I guess it's not a surprise that they had their eyes on her to begin with, but as the evidence started coming out, it wasn't looking so good for her. So where did the fentanyl come from that was found in his drink? Corey actually had correspondence with a dealer. This was a confidential informant for the police. And this dealer pretty much gave them very damning evidence against her. This dealer said that she first contacted them looking for painkillers, like strong painkillers, and they gave her hydrocodone. And according to this informant, when Corey came back around, she actually asked for the Michael Jackson stuff, which I'm sure you guys remember Michael Jackson passed away from a propofol overdose. So that's what she apparently was looking for, but she ended up getting fentanyl from this dealer and she got over $900 worth of it. This time when she got the fentanyl was actually February 11th of 2022. And the Valentine's Day when he bit the sandwich and had this strong reaction was just three days later. So it's believed that she put this in his food that night. She circled back around a couple weeks later and asked for, again, over $900 worth of fentanyl. This dealer provided it. I think six days later is the time frame is when Eric actually passed away. It's alleged that she put the fentanyl in his Moscow mule that night. And this drink apparently has a really strong taste and ginger beer apparently has a really strong taste which would mask the flavor of the crushed up pills. So that's basically what she is being accused of. Let's go down the list with the evidence from her phone, attempts to make herself the sole beneficiary of his estate, which in my opinion is the worst piece of evidence, correspondence with the dealer, which is also pretty bad, as well as Eric's family and friends relaying the information that he had told them about. If something happens to me, it was Corey. They went ahead and charged her. Police went ahead and charged her. She was charged with aggravated murder and three counts of possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute. Now, it's alleged that the day after he passed away, 
Corey actually threw a party to celebrate this house that she was closing on and apparently Eric's sister was over at the house and the two of them allegedly got into some sort of altercation and one can presume that maybe this was about the whole money situation with his sister being the sole beneficiary because to follow at this point would be a legal battle over Eric's estate with Corey feeling like she should have the rights to the $3.6 million. She had no idea that he had taken her off of his will and off of his life insurance. The life insurance that she had changed herself and thought that she was secure being the beneficiary of. Everything was to go to his sister. He wanted his boys to be taken care of. She would actually go on to write a children's book about dealing with grief. So basically in support of her boys as they're going through this awful, situation of losing their father and kind of how to deal with this. Apparently it had mixed reviews. Apparently some people said that the book was awful, but the last thing I saw was that Amazon actually removed it from their shelves. And I didn't cross check that, but it would make sense if, um, it would make sense for that to be the case. But it appears if everything is true, that she is a very callous woman, um, a wolf in sheep's clothing really. I mean, based on everything we know, it appears that she is guilty, but you always have the benefit of innocent until proven guilty. So she is still innocent in the eyes of the law. I'm definitely curious to see how this plays out and what stance her defense takes in this case. Anytime you mess with the life insurance, you are setting yourself up to be accused. That is the number one thing that I've seen in so many cases where it's so blatantly obvious that it was the spouse when it comes down to the life insurance. For her to go in and change herself to be the sole beneficiary on her own without even talking to Eric and then for him to change it back did not look good. That is going to be some serious evidence that the prosecution will use against her, I'm sure. But if she is guilty, I am mind blown that she thought that she could get away with this given the trail that she left behind. Most importantly, I am concerned about the children. I hope that they're okay after all this. And I really do send my condolences out to his family and especially his sons. I hope that they are okay after all this. After all they're losing, they already lost their dad and now they're losing their mom if she gets sent away to prison. But be sure to let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. This was quite the discussion. Again, I just, I can't believe it. I keep saying I'm mind blown because I actually am. This case is insane. But that's where I'm gonna leave you guys today. You know what I'm gonna say. If you made it this far, you are loyal. You really are and I appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening depending on what time it is when you watch this video. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.